there's uh, quite a number of changes we have to do here uh, in terms of lighting as well as quality settings. If I look at my scene, you notice probably you have already for a while noticed this very strange effect where as I move my camera around, shadows appear to pretty much be drawn in as I get closer. And as I get farther away, they kind of disappear and fade out. This is a quality setting. The reason this is happening is because of a shadow distance setting uh, that's meant to optimize performance. Okay, What I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much disable that or increase the shadow distance very easily. Right now in the editor, we're looking at this with mediocre graphical settings. Okay, That's not what we want. What I want to do is I want to be able to see this at the best highest quality settings so that I know exactly what I'm doing and I don't get any you know, nasty surprises later or anything like that. So in order to uh, fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the edit menu. I'm going to go to project settings and then I'm going to go to quality. That's going to open up my quality settings for my project over here on the right. Here I have the ability to set up the quality settings for uh, the default standalone quality, the default web player quality, and the editor quality. Right now I'm working with the Unity editor, so what I want to do is I want to switch this from a good setting to something higher because good is kind of in the middle. Okay. So we can go with fastest, which is going to give you the worst graphics. If I click on fastest, you can see I lose my shadows and everything just looks really ugly uh, at the moment. Uh, if I choose good, I go back to how it was before. I get some shadows, but I still get some artifacting. Uh, instead of beautiful, I'll just skip over to fantastic, which is the best quality settings we can get. And now you can see that as I move the camera away at the same distances as before, the shadows no longer disappear, so I don't get that weird behavior. You'll also notice that the shadows improved in quality. If I look at the shadows on the floor right now coming in from the sun, if I go back to good, you can see they have artifacts. They look grainy and, and kind of blocky. If I go to fantastic, they look very nice and smooth. They look, well, as the name suggests, fantastic. Okay. So now the warehouse starts to look a lot better. The lighting, the textures, everything just looks a lot better. So I'm going to keep my setting at fantastic. Okay. All right, then finally over here we have the ability to manually change all of those settings. So if I go to the fantastic preset, these are all the default settings for the fantastic settings. So if I wanted to add, say, more anti-aliasing, I could do that. If I wanted to increase the shadow distance because it's not enough, I could do that. If I wanted to change my shadow resolution to medium or low resolution, I could do that, so on and so forth. And we'll talk more about these settings later, but we're going to skip that for now. Right now I just want to switch the editor to fantastic mode so that I can see this a lot better. The other thing that's kind of interfering with my scene right now is the ambient or environment lighting. Okay, By default, Unity has this sort of ambient lighting in my scene. That's why I can see everything even though it looks dim. Okay, I don't like to have that ambient lighting in my scene because it doesn't look very uh, realistic. All right. So how do we change that? If we go back to the edit menu, we can go to the render settings. That's going to open up the render settings for this specific scene right here. So here we have the ability to do quite a few different things. We have an ambient light parameter right here, which is set to a very dark gray. If I change that to a red, you can see everything in the scene starts to be affected by that ambient lighting. I'm going to turn the ambient lighting off by setting it to pure black. That basically takes off the ambient lighting. This means we have no ambient lighting. And anything that's not receiving lights from these directional lights here is going to be pitch black. Now, why do I want to do this? The reason I want to do this is because this is probably one of the most realistic manners of working. Because in real life, uh, ambient lighting isn't created by some kind of uniform ambient light that exists in the universe. It's created based off of light that bounces off of objects. That's the way that real life works. So in real life, if I had this sunlight coming in through uh, these skylights in this warehouse in the afternoon, Anywhere where the sunlight doesn't hit is not going to look pitch black. We're going to have indirect lighting bouncing around. Okay, so uh, not to get into the whole technical, you know, issue and discussion about what indirect lighting is and global illumination, and all that stuff. I'm just going to go ahead and start to show you by example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create some fake indirect lights, and these fake lights are going to create my ambient lighting for me. Okay. And the way that I'm going to do this is actually pretty simple. I'm just going to go to Game Object, go to Create Other, and I'm going to create myself a point light. And I'm going to take this point light and I'm going to place it on the floor right here. Okay. Now this is where it becomes kind of an art form. You have to be really good with lighting and understand how lighting works in the real world if you want to achieve a really good effect. 
okay um, there's really no step-by-step -step guide I can give you again it's kind of an artistic thing you have to be really good with lighting um, I have years of lighting experience in CG and in photorealism with things like mental ray and high-end renderers so I can actually use that knowledge to my advantage if you if you've never worked with photorealistic renderers or if you don't have a lot of lighting experience uh, for production that's okay I'm going to show you some techniques that you can use basically what I want here is the way that this works is lighting from the Sun bounces off of the floor and then it's going to kind of spread out throughout the room so what I want to do is I want to take these fake point lights and place them in hot spot areas and hot spot areas are areas where uh, light from the Sun is hitting something directly so right here like on the floor for example is a hot spot area so I'll move the light just below the floor okay and I'm going to increase the range of this light. So I'm going to increase it. As I increase it, you can see that I have this really nice bounce lighting from the floor. So it looks like light is reflecting off the floor and hitting these uh, pillars, the barrels, walls, things like that. So what I want to do at this point is probably increase the intensity a little bit. And I also want to use uh, the color of the lighting. Okay. So what I'll do is I don't want to use this white color because now it looks fake. So I'll go to the color picker over here. I'm going to use the uh, eyedrop tool and I'm going to choose, I'm going to sample a color of the environment and now that's going to give me a nice color that kind of matches up with the environment, the lighting from the sun. So now you can see that the lighting, the color that reflects off of these objects matches up with the lighting from the floor. Okay, And it looks more natural. It actually looks like indirect lighting that's bouncing around in our scene. And at this point you can play around with the range as well as the um, intensity parameter you don't want to overdo it if you overdo it it won't look good or convincing to the eye so you want to do something that's very subtle okay so something like that uh, looks pretty decent the color is a little bit too saturated right now so I'm going to desaturate that color a little bit so it's not too uh, not too strong there let me uh, bring it back into more of a yellow bright something like that so just play around with it until you get something that looks uh, pretty good okay and once I do that I can then duplicate this light and use it again so I'm gonna hit control D I'm gonna make a duplicate of this light and I'm gonna move this light to another hotspot so I'm gonna identify another hotspot which is basically over here where the lights hitting uh, from the Sun right about here and since this area of light right here is pretty big, maybe I might break this up into two indirect lights. So I might place this one right here. Okay. So it's kind of bouncing around in the scene a little bit. And then maybe I could place another one over here in this area. So maybe I'll hit Control D to duplicate. And I can move this one over here in this area. Start to get some indirect lighting right there. And again, you want to play around with the lighting values. This one has too much intensity, so I'll actually lower it a bit to something maybe like that. This one right here looks pretty good. So have a look at the intensity, see how it looks. If it's too much, reduce it. If it's not enough, increase it. Once I have those hot spots done, now what I'm going to do is some basic uh, indirect uh, kind of lighting here. I'm going to take this one. This one seems a little bit too bright in my opinion, so I'm going to reduce it a little bit. Something like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this light here and I'm going to move it up. I'm going to place another indirect light. This one I'm going to place maybe around here in this area just to fill in some lighting right there because it's kind of dark over there. You want to make sure that you don't have shadows casting for these lights. They look best when they don't have shadows. And for this one, maybe I'll increase the range a little bit to so something like this and decrease the intensity just a little bit. Maybe I'll move it more toward the right because that's where more of the light's coming from. And again, you want to make it a very subtle light. So don't make it too strong because then it looks like there's some kind of a light bulb in that area. So you don't want to do that. You want to be careful about that. So something like that looks pretty good. Over here, I might want to place uh, kind of an indirect light over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light here, Control-D to duplicate it. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to try to place this maybe about kind of under the skylight right here because that's where a lot of lights coming from from the skylight so I'll place that light about right there and you have to keep in mind that because we're using deferred rendering the performance cost from placing all of these little point lights these little fill lights is not going to be a lot 
We're not going to suffer uh, too much damage from this, if at all. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place this light about maybe about right here in the middle. And you can see how now it looks like there's light bouncing from the floor, from the bright sunlight, and hitting these uh, air vents and air ducts and little items and elements of the ceiling right there. It starts to look much better than before. We get a little bit of light hitting that wall right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the range of this light so it reaches farther into the scene. So something like this maybe. So you can see now that it's hitting the walls and stuff in the background. So now we have less areas that are pitch black and more areas that have subtle lighting. So that's kind of the key that you want to go for here. Um, the look that you want to go for is a look where most of the pitch black areas are gone and replaced with very subtle, very poorly lit areas. That will give you kind of that effect of lighting that's bouncing around because this is, uh, even though it's the late afternoon, there's still plenty of light coming in from the sun. And I might actually take the sun and increase its intensity. So maybe I might take that sun and place it at 1, which is actually that's a little bit bright. It's a little bit too bright. Let me try something like 0.75, about 3 quarters of the way to 1. That looks pretty good. That's not too bad. So I have kind of this nice indirect lighting bouncing around in my scene. And it's completely fake. It's not real indirect lighting. But it gives a pretty pretty nice effect to the scene. Let me take this light that's over here. I'm going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to move this one over here somewhere. Because I have this other skylight window up he over here. So I'm going to place another one of these fill lights right underneath that skylight. So it's going to fill in this area. So you can see how we have this beautiful lighting now that's filling up this area. And it's a huge improvement over what we had before. So now if I look at this warehouse from the entrance or something over here, and I look at the lighting, the lighting looks a lot more convincing. Now it looks like we have this sunset type of yellowish warm lighting coming in, and it's bouncing off of objects and kind of filling the room, giving that nice subtle volume to our room. And we still have dark areas as you can see. So it's not like that ambient lighting that we had before that kind of evenly puts this fake ambient lighting all over the place and just makes things look so wrong. Okay, so that looks pretty awesome. So I want to keep those dark areas and corners over there. Uh, those look pretty cool. I like that. So we have this kind of gradation of light, areas that are kind of brightly lit. And then you kind of see these dark areas where you can barely see anything. Kind of... Uh, makes your imagination run wild and stuff you know it just adds a nice mood to your scene so that's kind of the trick here um, so basically that's gonna do it for this video right here uh, just to wrap up what I did you probably would need to practice th these techniques before you get them to look good okay because again it's not a technical thing it's not like following a one two three step guide to doing it right every single time you kind of have to practice with this and understand the way that light bounces around in a room. Okay, uh, Best way to do that is photographs. Have a look at photographs of the type of environment you're doing. If you're doing, say, an office building, look at the reference images of real-life office buildings and the interiors and see how light bounces around and interacts with different furniture, walls, ceilings, the floor, different things like that. See how light comes in through windows and see which areas are hot spots, which areas are brighter than others based on how much light's hitting or how little light is hitting. Uh, and then after some practice, you'll actually get pretty good at doing this kind of stuff. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm happy with my indirect lighting. I may come in and do some tweaks and changes later, uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Right now I got the basic fill lighting in. Looks pretty good. I'm going to end this video here. And in the next one, we're going to start to get into using light mapping with Beast, which is now incorporated with uh, Unity 3.0.